Come take refuge in the Lord, for God is good. From the storms and struggles of life we come. Come rejoice in the Lord, for God will provide peace for you. From fear and anxiety we come to find peace. Come, open your hearts to the Lord, and you will be given blessing. Thanks be to God for the many ways in which we are blessed. Amen. Well, I'm Reverend Christopher Hines and truly honor and privilege to bring you your pastoral prayer this morning, October 27, 2024. Would you please bow your heads in prayer with me? Lord, we want to continue to lift up Israel in that whole situation. It seems to be getting worse. We're just looking for an end game here where we could see your glory be shown. Lord, we want to ask you to help everyone that's being affected throughout that region and throughout the whole world right here at home and everyone, every son and daughter of yours. You said, Lord, that when we have you as our father, we are all one nation under God, the whole world, your holy nation, your chosen people. And I want to ask you to please help every one of your chosen people right now. Please help that whole situation. Lord, there's so much stuff going on in our country right now with the election coming up and everything that's going on throughout our whole nation. I want to ask you to please shower us with your grace and your mercy as we need it more than ever right now. Lord, we come to you on bent knees in DeKalb. Every day we just are put to our knees so that all we can do is look up to you. Through all humility, we honor you. Through all glory, we honor you. Through all love, we honor you. Through all pain, we honor you. Through all pleasure, we honor you. Lord, we just give you all the praise in every way, and we just thank you for all the gifts that you shower us with every day. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Would you please join me in our Lord's Prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You join me in singing, joyful, joyful, we adore thee. We'll be singing verses one and three. <clears throat>
Well, this is a time of celebration where your sons and daughters have brought their tithes to your church this morning, Lord. And we just want to thank you for the opportunity to give your sons and daughters the opportunity to have a job, to have a career, to have the, the wherewithal, to be able to work and to be able to, to earn a living, to be able to, to tithe and to be able to, to save and tithe and to be able to tithe all these years week after week, year after year to your church, Lord. And it's only because of you that we can do that. And we want to praise you. And I want to ask you to bless the hands that have brought the tithes to your church this morning. And out of Proverbs, it reads, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thy own eyes, fear the Lord and depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruit of all thine increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, once again, we are truly blessed and honored this morning to have special music from our brother, Bill Kunkel. Please enjoy these next moments that we have together within the majestic voice of our brother, Bill, in a song titled, Listen to My Heart. Thank you. That was very well done. You could keep going. <laughs> I'll sit here for as long as you want me to, but uh, uh, I, I got to share something with you. Over the past 50 years that I've been doing this, I always had a dream of uh, going out and singing in, in a big room to 20, 30,000 people. Uh, well, the biggest crowd I ever got was like 5,000, that was. But uh, it, was, it was a moving moment for that. But, you know, God has done this to me and kept me going <clears throat> excuse me, and watched over me and my voice to be able to sing. And I've been singing to thousands of people for the last 50 years. And I am enjoying it more now than I ever did before when I was out doing rock bands, you know. But it, it's been a moving experience for me because each and every Sunday that I sing at this church, another church, or something else, I'm singing to people that I add up into that millions and thousands. And I want to say thank you for listening to me. And... Like he said, this song is called Listen to My Heart. I try to blend it with something that he's doing or you know, whatever, Pastor, whoever may be. But sometimes I get close, sometimes I don't hit it, sometimes I nail it. So we'll have to see where this one goes. But I want to thank you all for listening to me for all these years and consider it, we're going to do more. How do you explain? How do you describe a love that goes from east to west and runs as deep as it is wide? You know how I hope. Lord, you know all our fears And words cannot express the love we feel But we long for you to hear So if you listen to our hearts Hear our spirit sing a song of praise that flows from those you have redeemed. And we will use the words we know to tell you what an awesome God you are. But when words are not enough, 
Tell me of our love, just listen to our heart. If words could fall away from these lips of mine, and if I had a thousand years, I would still run out of time. So if you listen to my heart, every beat will say, thank you for the life, thank you for the truth, and thank you for the way. And if you listen to our heart, yes, it seems a song of praise and love the knows you have redeemed. And we will use the words we know to tell you what an awesome God you are. I would words are not enough to tell you of our home. Just listen to our hearts. You know, whether we know it or not, He listens to our heart each and every day. He knows what's in our heart. So if you listen to my heart, every beat will say, thank you for the life, thank you for the truth, and thank you for the way. And if you listen to our heart, Spirit sing a song of praise that flows from those you have redeemed, and we will use the words we know to tell you what an awesome God you are. Those words are not enough. To tell you of our love, just listen to her heart. But when words are not enough, to tell you of our love, just listen to her heart. Thank you very much. That was beautiful. Well, we've been in a series titled Psalms. And this week we step into one of the greatest psalms of all time. I know I keep saying that, but this truly is. This is a, this is a sermon titled Taste and See That the Lord is Good. I'll be reading from the NIV, Psalm 34, commencing in 1, going to 8, and then concluding in 19 and 22, the Word of God. I will exalt the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. I will glory in the Lord let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant. 
Their faces are never covered with shame. This poor man called. And the Lord heard him. He saved him out of his troubles. The angel of the Lord encapes around those who fear him and delivers them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. The righteous person may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers him from all them. He protects all his bones. Not one of them will be broken. Evil will slay the wicked. The foes of the righteous will be condemned. The Lord will rescue his servants. No one who takes refuge in him will be condemned. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let me pray. Lord, I ask you to fill this space with the Holy Spirit. And let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, my rock and my redeemer. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So King David, we know about King David. He's been through so many things. And so this story really is at the beginning of, of what he started going through. We know that, that King David was a little shepherd boy that was called out to, to bring some food out to his, his uh, brothers in a battlefield. And if um, you go to the next slide, there might be, it, this is, saw, I'm sorry, right before that. It, this is in 1 Samuel 17, 45, 50. And we see that the King David goes out to these battlefields to bring food to his brothers. But then he hears this Philistine like mocking the Israelites. And what they did, I thought this was neat back then. So they didn't like have a, a full on war, like battling one against the other. They had a, a, a place in the center where it was almost like a, a coliseum where they would come in and they would have these battles in here. And so you had the Philistines and, and the Israelites over here. And then they had this battle. And then everybody, uh, Goliath was mocking all the Israelites, every, all the men in, in battle. And David hears this and he's like, what's going on with this? How could this happen? And so he challenges Goliath. And we, we just follow with me in 1 Samuel. Here's quickly the story of, of, of David and Goliath. So David said to the Philistine, You come against me with a sword and a spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defiled. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hands. Now, mind you, King David was five feet tall. Goliath was nine, they say nine to 10 feet tall. And here he is saying this. And he said, you're coming with, with a sword? I'm coming with the Lord. There's no way, it doesn't matter. I, I, if I have the Lord on my side, you're going down. And so this very day, I will give the carcasses of the Philistine army to the birds and the wild animals. And the whole world will know that there is, is a God in Israel. Can I get an amen? All those who gather here will, will know that it's not by the sword or spear that the Lord saves, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into my hands. As the Philist Philistine Goliath moved closer to attack, Dave, to attack him, David ran up to the battle line to meet him, reaching into his bag, taking out a stone. Now he had five smooth stones. He takes out a stone, he put it, and he slung it, and it hits the Philistine Goliath right in the forehead. And he falls face down to the ground, and David runs up, grabs his sword, cuts his head off. Then David became, if you can go to the next picture, next slide, so you see this picture. So you see the, 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 the people behind him, see that there was this battle, everybody's watching this happen. And so that's the Philistines on one side and maybe the Israelites on the other. And so we see that, that David just one sling of the rock. And you could see it in the, the middle of his head there. And Goliath goes down. The Lord is on his side. Look at the difference. David has 
just a slingshot. Goliath has this huge sword, this whole, this huge, look, look at the battle armor that he has on him. But David, that doesn't matter to David. David has the Lord. There's the ultimate battle armor that we all can have going into every battle of our life. Every single little thing that we go in, we have the Lord on our side. So after that, David became, uh, Saul, uh, one of Saul's cop really liked him at that point before he find, finds out what's going to happen here. David, he sends David into battle. David starts winning all these battles. If you go to the next slide. We find out this in 1 Samuel 21. Um, before that happens, David wins battle. Saul gets very jealous of David and then just wants to kill him. His whole life is trying to get David killed. So on that day, this is leading up to Psalm 34, guys, this everything that I'm getting ready to say is leading up to what da when David writes the very first words of Psalm 34. So that day, David fled from Saul. And went to Achish, king of Gath. Now Gath was where the, the Philistines were. So, so he couldn't hide where he was because Saul was trying to kill him. He had, he had to go to a land of his enemies because he thought Saul would not go into this land of Gath where the Philistines were to, because it, it was their enemy. So this is where David found refuge. He thought he could find refuge in there because everywhere, everybody knows that Saul's trying to get David. He's on the run. But the servants of Achish said to him, isn't this David, the king of the land? Isn't this the one they sing about in their dances? Saul has slain his thousands and David his tens of thousands. That is the precipice of why Saul is so jealous. Because of this song they were singing for David. And here Saul is the king. David was the anointed king, but he had not been appointed yet. David took these words to heart because here he, he's, in, he's in Gath. He's, he's in, a, in, a, in, a, in another town, another, and, and they even know about it. So he's scared. He's like, oh my, he, where can he go? He, he can't go back home. He can't, he can't even go to where his enemies are. So David took these words to heart and was very afraid of Achish, king of Gath. So he pretended to be insane. Can you imagine this? So back then, if you were insane, they wouldn't do anything with you. They wouldn't kill you. They just kind of let you go. And, and so he's, if, if, if you were sick, they, I don't know if they knew what to do with you. So he pretended to be insane. I mean, this is, I'm not making this up. This is the word of God. So he pretended to be insane in their presence. And while he was in their hands, he acted like a madman making marks on the doors of the gate and letting saliva run down his beard. Can you imagine David? Now we know he's a good, a, a good looking guy, right? A champion, but now he's acting crazy. He's got spit running down his beard. He's, he's banging on it. He's just acting totally insane. And they're bringing him in front of Achish and Achish is like, what? Look at this man. He's insane. Why are you bringing him to me? Let him go. He lets him go. So then we find in the next slide what happens. David left Gath and escaped to the cave of Adullam. Now, I don't know about you, but if in your life have you been in a situation like this where just things are coming at you, maybe not trying to take you down you know, physically, but things are coming at you. And, and it could be any little thing. It could be cancer, which is huge, not little. But it could be a bill. It could be an argument with your family member. Just these little things that come out, and we all end up being in these caves. If you can go to the next picture, this is where David, this is actually the cave of Adullam, the actual cave. And he sits down after all this turmoil that's going on in his life, going from being very high up to now he's stuck in a cave, people trying to kill him. He's anointed, but not appointed. And that's not mine. I, I heard that. So he's living in this exile. And, and he finds himself right here where he should be the appointed king, but now he's not. So what would you do if you're in a cave like this? Would, you, would this be a time to praise the Lord? 
Or would it just be time to question them? Be like, how can I be here? What, how, how, Lord, I thought I was the anointed one. How, what's happening here? So he sits down and he writes Psalm 34. Now, Psalm 34 is an acrostic psalm. So acrostic psalm. So that means it's 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 actually every word, every line starts with a consecutive letter in the Hebrew alphabet. So it'd be like A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So every line in Psalm 34 is is an acrostic. It starts with in the Hebrew alphabet. So he not only is in turmoil, right? He's not only having somebody try to kill him, he's just writing this, this glorious letter, but he's also a glorious psalm, but he's also using his talent his po to write a poem. I mean, can you imagine? He's going through all this pain, and he's like, oh, well, here, let me start with A and then go to B so that we can remember it. It helps him remember, and they could sing it. But can you imagine the talent to, to even, to, to even just to, to write this in this, in this format? It just, it blows me away. So I'm going to exegete today's text in three ways. Taste and see that the Lord is good through enthusiastic praise, experience praise, and expected praise. So once again, David sits down in that cave and his very first words that he writes will I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. I will glory in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. How can he do this? I don't, it, it, it takes work. It takes, it, it takes practice. Friends, we go through these pains in our life, and, and is that a time that we sit down and the very first thing we think of is let's look up to Jesus because of this trial that I'm going through? Let's, let's, I'm going through all this pain, so let me praise Jesus. Let me praise the Lord. This is what we're taught to do. Now, I was able to do a really good Bible study with Reverend Dr. T.D. Hughes this week, and he puts it this way. He said, aren't we all in our caves? We all have these little caves, every little cave. And in the caves, we should praise. We need to praise in our caves. Our praise should be above our circumstances, regardless of what's going on in your life. Praise is above that. It's a different level. It's, we just step out of this life that we're in, to step out of this moment that we're in, step out of this cave that we're in mentally, and we praise because of it. We worship the Lord because of what he's done for us in our life. We've seen it. We wake up every day and we can taste it, the air. Just a beautiful smell. It's just we could see this. We we know that the Lord is good. We know that we could taste and see the Lord is good. So the first point is enthusiastic praise. When you are in pain, when you are in a cave, can you have enthusiastic praise? Now follow with me. As I go through this again, enthusiastic praise. We all have caves, and life is a cave. But it should not prevent us from praising. David sits down and says, I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. I will glory in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. In your pain that you're in right now, in your cave that you're in right now, this is the first thing that should be on our mind. First thing. No matter what's going on. Now, hey, everything might be great right now, too. You know, we just had some very great reports going, coming out. Some answer prayers. Again, we're right here again. We're right here again. But I want to challenge you to, to, to this, to this enthusiastic praise, to, to always praise the Lord no matter what. There's so many reasons that we could praise for what he's done. And, and friends, if he doesn't do another thing, in our life. He doesn't do another thing. We can praise him for what he's already done. Correct? 
Can I get an amen? Can we praise him for what he's already done in our lives leading up to this moment? He doesn't do another thing. Praise the Lord for what he's done because we've all been in these caves in our life. We've all been stuck. We've all been on the run. We all have not been in moments of peace. But can we, in those moments, can we be like David and exalt the Lord? It leads me to my next point of experience praise. This is how we can do this. So are you in a cave right now? Can you praise in your cave? You should be able to because of what you've experienced in your life. Think about this in your life right now. Think about the times you've seen the Lord bring you through. He does it for me every day. I talk about this every day, being stuck in a cave in the morning, but, but getting free by the end of the night. You know, and, and the Lord answers my prayers every day. Now, here's a picture of the prodigal son and his father. Experience praise. This was an oil painting by Rembrandt, very famous painting. So the prodigal son right here, that's the father holding his son. Now, if you remember, if you remember the story, the, the son was took his inheritance from, from the father before he died and went and squandered on easy living, ends up in a, a pig farm feeding pigs. Now, he's a Jewish son feeding pigs in a pig farm jews didn't want anything to do with pigs they they were unclean they were on it, it was this is like the most humiliating thing in the world for a jew and he finally comes to himself and he comes home to the father and he's coming home to the father expecting the father to 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 not not show him love. He's coming home to apologize. He wants to come home to just to even be a servant of the father. And I, I want you to realize this right now, that our father in heaven right now realizes that you might be in, in a pig, in a pig farm, slopping the pig, the pig feces and, and feeding it and, and just stuck in this cave that the prodigal son was stuck in. And you're afraid of, you know, what can we do? Can I get forgiveness? Can I, how can I get out of this? You need to just come to yourself, and here's the experienced praise. He got to experience it, and we can experience this every day in our lives. We get to experience it. He comes home, and the father has his arms wide open waiting for the son. Wide open, standing and waiting. The son's walking, smelling like pig feces. And he's getting ready to tell the father he's sorry. And the father runs to him. He runs to him. And it, it, in the heritage back then, an old man would never run. It's undignified. You don't run. You walk. He not only waits for him. He's not only waiting for him at the door. He's waiting for him. He runs to him. And your father in heaven is is, is this is a picture of God right now? Taste and see the Lord is good. He's waiting for him and he runs to him and he, and he hugs him and he shows him how much he loves him. Experience praise. Now follow with me in Psalm 34, commencing in four, concluding in eight. Experience praise. I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. This poor man. Now, this poor man is David. This poor man. He's, this poor man. He calls this poor man. This poor woman. This, this poor us. This is us. This is me. This, this poor man called. And the Lord heard him. He saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encapes around those who fear him. He delivers them. Taste and see the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. Taste and see the Lord is good. Now, can we, did I miss a slide? Can we back up a second? Uh, two more. Just back up. I think I, I missed the, the first picture. Yes, is that next? Okay. 
I'll go on. Taste and see the Lord is good. Uh, this is enthusiastic praise. Now, I've talked about this before. This is the, the, the bacon blue burger uh, from Rigonato's there in Geneva. And, you know, it's, it's a silly metaphor, but, but just if we could just think about this for a second, that what they do to, to create this, this burger is they take three or four meats and they ground them up. And they, I mean, they take so much preparation in this. And, and then they, they add so much. Shit. So if we, if, we, if we can relate to this, and I was there yesterday, and he's, the owner's bringing me around everybody, and I'm telling the story that if we could just, the, the preparation for, for the meal, if we take our, our worship that serious, like, and we just want to have this excellent meal, we just want to have this taste, we just want it to be so good, and, and, and just realize that, that we can have the same approach to the Word of God. You know, my mom made... Um, this, she took all day Saturday, last Saturday, and cooked an Italian meal and, and made the, the, the pasta from the flour. I mean, it took all day. It took eight hours. And then the stuff had to simmer over, overnight to the next day. And think about the preparation. of. of and she made these meatballs. And it's, it's neat. She, she used um, veal and, and ground meat and lamb and, 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 and it just, just made these unbelievable meatballs and just i'm thinking about the preparation that we can have to making something like this that we need to taste and see the lord is good and that brings us to the experience praise experience praise right before that so i showed you the picture of the prodigal son and then how we experience it so the same thing like with the food with the with the picture of, I think it's a slide before this. With the picture of 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 that of that burger, uh, we have experienced that. Now we ex the picture of the prodigal son. We've experienced he experienced the love of the father, and we can David right now when he's writing this is reflecting back on that experiencing what he's gone through, and even though he's in a cave. Even though he, he's in this, this very bad circumstance, he can sit and praise the Lord. And I say that we need to do the same thing today. We need to taste and see the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. Try him today. Try him. Taste him. Taste it. I mean, it's, it's when we ent have something enter into our bodies, it's, it's an intimate relationship, right? Something's coming inside our bodies. It's that intimate relationship that we can have. And when you taste and see the Lord is good, it's that intimate relationship that you have. It's, it's, it's so personal. It's so, only you know what's going through your body. And you know what, what, what things that, how things work, what you can eat, what you can't eat, what doesn't work well with your body but you know that that the word of god will always work well with your body and you need to have the word of god you need to have this experience this experience praise leads me to my third point expected praise expected praise so are you in a cave right now can you praise in your cave you should be able to because of what you've experienced. And then now you should be able to because of what you're expecting. We know that we are going to be delivered by Christ Jesus because of the cross. We can expect that. We already know that Jesus wins. We know that we can expect that. And here King David is in this, in this cave, in this situation. And now he can still expect to see that he will be delivered, and he's going to be delivered by the cross. Now watch this in Psalm 34, 19, commencing in 19, concluding in 22. David gets delivered because of, he's expected to be delivered. The righteous person may have troubles. The righteous person may have many troubles. But the Lord delivers him from them all expected praise you might have many troubles you might be stuck in that cave right now but expect that the lord is going to deliver you today and every time he protects all his bones not one of them will be broken 
a messianic proph prophecy where Jesus is on the cross and they're going through. And what they used to do is when somebody was on the cross, they would actually break their legs so that it would help them die quicker. Sometimes it took two, three days to die on the cross. And when they want, when the soldiers want to break Jesus's legs, he was already dead. Nobody is going to take the life of Jesus except Jesus. Nobody is going to tell Jesus when he's finished except him. And he said, I'm, it is finished. So his bones were not broken. Friends, this is a thousand years before Jesus took the cross. It's written right there. He protects all his bones. Not one of them will be broken. And in the same way, in your cave, in your situation you're in right now, the Lord is going to protect you. Not one of your bones will be broken. You will get through this. And you'll be able to praise the Lord. And I know that we're all stuck in, in some cave right now. Some little things going on in your life. But realize that you will be delivered. Evil will slay the wicked. The foes of the righteous will be condemned. The Lord will rescue his servants. No one who takes refuge in him will be condemned. Delivered by the cross. Delivered by the cross. Now, uh, the verse right before then, 34, 18, if you look in your Bibles, it, it kind of leads, it says, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. So then it goes into the next thing where no bones are going to be broken. So the Lord is going to, the term, he's going to, he's going to save the ones that are brokenhearted and then so much that not, no bones will be broken. Expected praise. We could have enthusiastic praise in our cave. We could have experienced praise in our cave. And now we have expected praise in our cave. Expected praise, friends, because we know that the Lord will deliver us. We know that we will be delivered. We know that we'll have a chance to taste and see that the Lord is good. And once you do that, you can taste. And see the Lord is good through your praise. You can taste and see the Lord is good through reading the word. You can taste and see the Lord is good by praising him always. The next slide. So when we taste and see the Lord is good, we should and must show enthusiastic praise. Because of what we've experienced and because of what we can expect. So friends, if you are in a cave right now, like King David was, if you're stuck and you see no way out, if you're at the lowest you've ever been in your life, just look up. Look to Jesus. Now, if things are going great, the same exact thing. Look up. Look to Jesus. Because when you have this enthusiastic praise, when praises go up, blessings come down. When you are in the worst situation of your life and you can praise the Lord, I guarantee he's going to bring you out of it. I guarantee when you are in a turmoil in your life and you can taste and see how good the Lord is, he is going to take care of you. He's going to deliver you. We know that he's going to deliver us because it was done on the cross. So now we can have enthusiastic praise because of what we've experienced. And now we can have enthusiastic praise because of what we can expect. He is going to bring us out of the cave into his glory. He is going to take us from that situation and bring us to him. And what we need to do is just look to Jesus in every way, in every situation, and he will deliver you. Let me pray. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for the scripture text. Thank you for Psalm 34. Thank you for just delivering us in every situation as you did King David. Lord, we're all in our own little cave right now. We're all in these little caves of, of despair and turmoil, and we're also in caves of triumph and glory. 
But Lord, either way, we want to look to you. We want to praise you. We want to give you all the exalt, exalt you in every way, praise you in every way. And Lord, especially when we are just at our wit's end, like King David was, had to act crazy, had to become a madman, had to do something that, that he would never do. But then for you to deliver him through that and for him to give us Psalm 34 throughout that whole situation, Lord, it's only because of you, because you delivered King David. We can sit here today almost 3,000 years later and praise you as we taste and see how good you are. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you so much. We just give you all the praise today and all God's people said, amen. If you'd please stand and join me in singing, Come Christians, Join to Sing. It's number 70 in the hymnals. <clears throat> beautiful would you please pray the prayer of salvation with me in the quiet of your hearts or aloud lord jesus i repent of my sins and surrender my life wash me clean i believe that you lord jesus are the son of god that you died on the cross for my sins and rose again on the third day for my victory I believe this in my heart and make confession with my mouth that you, Lord Jesus, are my Savior. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And now receive your benediction from Psalm 121. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life.
The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. Saints of First Baptist Church of the Calb, go in peace. Thank you.